Hello and welcome to another one of my future videos, this time on DigiKeys updates. Now before I get into all the new features, uh, I need to go over something I covered in the last video. I think a few people had struggled uh, in setting up uh, the external MIDI mapping in AUM, so I just want to go over that again. But this time with the aid of the virtual mouse, so I can point a few things out that weren't so obvious before. So let's start with this simple pattern. We're going to freeze track 2 and we're going to attempt to replace the instrument on track 2 with an external AUV3 instrument. So the first thing you need to do is head over to the FX out dialog and turn on MIDI out and turn off local. Now if we go over to AUM, create a new channel strip and load your synth of choice. Click on the little hamburger menu. And look down at the bottom of the dialog, there's a filter section with all 16 MIDI channels. Now we want to turn off all channels except channel 2, which is the channel re we're replacing in DigiKeys. And finally select DigiKeys as the MIDI source and lo and behold, it's working. Now tap and hold track 2 to unmute and let's listen to it in context. Okay, now I've got that out of the way, let's look at the new features and we'll start off with multiple outputs. As I'm sure most of you know, AUM has recently introduced the ability to have multiple inputs and outputs on your plugins. Now obviously it's down to third party developers like myself to take advantage of this and DigiKeys does just that, allowing you to route any one of the 16 uh, tracks to one of four output buses. So let's see how it works. Now this becomes really useful when you want to bypass the internal effects and use something external. Now the way this is done is to create a second channel strip and click on the input. You should see a new section called Multiple Audio Unit Instances and you'll see DigiKeys in there, so select it. Now if you look at the audio slot you'll see a little number appear beside DigiKeys and from there you can actually select a bus number. Now from here you have a choice of three output buses and you can route any of the internal instruments to these three buses um, to add external effects. So there's a, the internal effects will be disabled, uh, it's a raw sound that comes through here. Now I could continue this process and add another bus but for this demo all I'm going to do is add a reverb to bus 2 and then route something through that reverb. Now if we return back to DigiKeys, I will show you how to uh, uh, send a local internal sound out through bus 2 and through that reverb we've just set up. In order to hear the effect clearly, I'm going to solo track 2. Just tap and hold on track 2 to turn on solo. Now if we take a look at the mixer uh, and press the corresponding FX out button above the track we want to send to bus 2, uh, click the bus button and select bus 2. Okay, so if we head back to AUM and take a look at what's going on, uh, we can clearly see that there's audio coming through track 2 and we can hear the reverb. So let's return to DigiKeys, uh, solo track 3, uh, click on the FX out dialog which is also above the transport, select bus 3, go back to AUM, and again, if we use the slider on channel 3, we can hear that it is now affecting channel 3. So it can also be used just as a mixing, an external mixing source. Okay, so that concludes this section. Let's move on to the next new feature, which is the Live Matrix. Now the Live Matrix feature is really a performance, a live performance tool but it can also be used to create something called scenes which can be used with the remote feature I'm going to discuss later. But for now, let's just take a look at the um, matrix dialog. Now the live matrix button can be found to the right of the construction grid above the randomize function and note that you need to disable song mode in order to get here. Now when you first see this dialog, it can look a bit intimidating but you've got track names down the left hand side 
and we've got the 24 available patterns along the top. Now at the top left of this dialog you've got a Q mode button and what this does, this affects the way in which changes that you make within this dialog are reflected in the pattern changes. By default when you make any changes in this dialog it will wait until the loop ends before those changes take effect. Now to change pattern you just simply click on the pattern number and this ensures that every track from that pattern is selected. But you can freely select tracks from other patterns and mix and match. You can even mute tracks by clicking on the track name in the header. You can quickly mute a group of tracks by just tapping and dragging within that header. So let's select pattern 1 and silence everything by the first track and start the sequencer. Now I'll mute track 2 and wait for the pattern to loop. Now I'll mute the bass track and wait. Notice how the changes only take effect when the pattern loops. It's because the Q mode is set to auto, which only makes your changes live once the pattern loops. So let's switch to pattern 2. And back to pattern 1. Now the row of 12 buttons along the bottom of the window are transpose buttons. Um, if you click on one of them then it will transpose at the next loop point. So let's try transposing by 3 semitones. Now you could actually uh, store these grid layouts in something called scenes and scenes can be used with the remote feature we're going to discuss next. Now all you have to do is make a selection within the grid and then tap and hold on a scene button to store that scene. So let's try and store uh, a number of grid layouts within the first few scene buttons. As you can see here I'm making selections and then pressing and holding the scenes buttons. Now it's just a case of pressing one of the 10 scene buttons when you want to recall a scene and start the sequencer. And you can do all that live performances just using the scene buttons. Now as I said before, these changes you make within the grid, or when you press the sing button, they actually are only committed every time the um, play loops, the pattern loops. Now we can change that using the Q mode. Now you can find the Q mode in the top left of the dialog. Currently it says auto. But if you press this button and select manual mode, you now have as long as you like to make as many changes as you like and press the Q button, Q now button. Um, it doesn't automatically change until you press the Q now button and the change will take place the next pattern loop. Now for those daring of you that like to live life by the seat of your pants, we've got live mode and uh, as you might guess, uh, live mode allows you to um, make changes in real time. So let's check that out, but you've got to be really really accurate here.
Okay, I think that covers live matrix performance mode. Now let's go have a look at remote control mode and see how we can put those scenes we created to some use. Now the remote button is available underneath the construction grid. And as you can see in here, we have the 24 patterns and the 10 available scenes. And to use this via MIDI, you have to enable the functionality. So you click that enable button um, and then anything coming in on MIDI channel 16 will start a pattern or scene. Now it's important to note that when you enable this feature, uh, channel 16, track 16, is really unavailable. Um, so you're kind of sacrificing a track, but 15 is enough for most people. Now you may have noticed that when I press one of the buttons, you see a little red rectangle appear around the button, which tells you it's queued but not actually playing. If we press one of these scene buttons here um, and start a scene playing, it plays immediately, but when we press another one, look, it's got the red rectangle around saying it's queued until it, it loops and it's playing. But uh, now you can see how the scenes can be used to construct songs in real time and um, um, controlled by MIDI. Now this kind of MIDI triggering is really catering for those with MIDI pedal boards for live triggering of patterns and scenes. You can actually use uh, this functionality though within a door such as Cubasis to trigger the patterns but there are some restrictions I'm going to go over that with you now. So the first thing you should do uh, before you do anything is turn on host sync because we want these patterns to synchronize with the tempo of the host. So just remember to turn that on. The other thing is that the MIDI notes I've got on this track here, um, they have to be specified ahead of time in order to cue the patterns ready for the transition. And the actual point at which these transitions happen, you can't really control. You've got to wait for the natural loops of these uh, patterns to end and start and finish. Now, as we play this uh, sequence, you'll notice that uh, when the notes are encountered, you'll see them queued up. Um, and you'll see on the interface the little red rectangle that appears around the uh, pattern that is queued. Now, I want to point out here that uh, I'm, I've got a note there on beat one of the song. Um, that is only possible because I'm running Cubasis 3 Beta at the minute, which seems to work perfectly. Uh, Cubasis 2 though, on the other hand, you can't do that. You have to specify the MIDI note ahead of time. I think Cubasis is more optimised, that's probably why. So that's about all I have time for in this video. So see you again soon, and thanks for watching.